look, Glance AI is fundamentally going to change the way the world shops. Um, it is adding intelligence and generative AI experiences to shopping. It's never been done before. We trained a foundation model of commerce you know, at a global scale. We launched this about a week ago. The results has just been fascinating. Right? You know, when you bring in uh, generative AI experiences to shopping, it changes the way you and I would shop because unlike the existing shopping experience where you see a product, what generative AI does is you see the product, but it actually brings the product in a spatial element with you in it, right? So therefore now you can see, traditionally we would both, all of us would go into a you know, trial room to try products. Well, generative AI can actually do two things. One, it tells you what looks good on you, then shows it onto you, and then tells you where to buy it from. All of these three things is done in a single click of a button. That's the level of intelligence Glance AI brings to the, uh, you know, brings to commerce now, and we believe it's going to change the way the world shops. And consumers, we have about a million and a half users in the United States. Consumers are absolutely loving it. They're not just engaging; they're obsessed. We are seeing every consumer generate about 18 commerce experiences a day. Use. Uh, Glance AI for almost 20 minutes a day, and 40% of them are starting their sh uh, shopping journey from a generative AI experience. And nobody else is doing this? Nobody in the world yet has done this. This is proprietary? That is correct. Uh, what does it mean then in terms of the translation into user growth? Can you paint some numbers on that? Well, we expect uh, to hit like 50 million users over the next six to nine months. Uh, but look, when you, when you launch these kind of technologies, you really don't know what's going to happen because we have been surprised at the scale of the technology uh, and its adoption already. So some of these things just go through the roof and we would just be excited about where it finally lands. What does it mean in terms of where it puts the revenue stream for Inmobi? Well, it is an important stream uh, of monetization eventually. We're not very focused on that today. Will this be a important stream for Inmobi eventually over a long period of time? Absolutely. We just don't know how big it's going to become. What, is, what we are very sure of, if you're able to change the way the world shops, monetization will follow. And I think what we are very focused on right now is developing the technology and furthering it so that you know, the model evolves so rapidly that it provides a level of intelligence in shopping that nobody else has ever seen before. And I can tell you, Shri, it is totally changing the way people think about commerce. And does this dovetail into the premiumization of the consumer in India, into financialization, into this entire uh, quick commerce narrative? And I, I would imagine that lends itself uh, very neatly to all those uh, drivers. Well, so two parts. Part one, the platform is launched in 140 countries. So we're not just in India. We have also launched in India, but 140 countries. Most of our users today are actually in the US. Mm. All right, that's one. Second, just specific to your question in India, yes, of course, it kind of fits very, it in, we are not competing with anybody. We are a, a technology layer on top of all the experiences of e-commerce that exist in any part of the country also in India. I know that the government is actively promoting uh, tier two cities. Where does Inmobi see the most fertile ground to capture new talent, to build out innovation hubs and grow the business? It's a very interesting question, Sri, and here's how we think about this. So we fundamentally believe very strongly in our core hub of Bangalore, firstly, to begin with. We think it is a place where the best of technologists are showing up. We created this deep tech foundation model in Bangalore, right? So we feel very kicked about the fact that, you know, India is starting to arrive on deep tech innovation and we are able to build it right there. And we don't need to actually look across the shores to essentially get that level of talent. So that's one. Second, we actually believe India is going to evolve itself into a two-tier model. The tier one cities like Bangalore will kick in for high-end work. But the tier two cities like Lucknow, uh, Indore and Jaipur and all of these places are also going to kick in because you know what the, the new talent 
does not necessarily want to move from their you know, hometown to the, to the bigger metros. And, and they are very talented. So we recently opened our office in Lucknow, which I would have never thought a few years ago that, you know, as in Mobi, which is a technology company, would ever go down the path to open one in Lucknow. But we went there. We were extremely excited about what we saw, the talent, the depth, the, the desire to actually stay there, and the hunger. The hunger of India has now actually percolated from the big cities down to the smaller cities. And I think companies like ourselves and you know, many others are going to lever leverage that quite a bit. Commerce Minister Piyush Goyal was talking about India's tech ecosystem, how it needs to step up and provide better quality, higher paying jobs to recent graduates and younger job seekers. Is Imobi part of that solution? We think, look, we are very deeply involved in creating deep technologies. Mm. Um, we need talent in India, and we look for talent in India, and we think we are a very strong provider of high quality talent and a, a strong payout uh, you know, to them at that point of time. So, so yes. Mobi is in hiring mode? Absolutely. Can you give us a, a strategic roadmap and perhaps a rationale for in a Mobi IPO and when that could happen? <laughs> Look, I've been hearing October. You've been hearing October. I would say we are very kicked about being a public company. Uh, look, for any entrepreneur, for anyone who starts a company off, it is an important aspect to essentially go out and become a public company. We would be very keen to, to be one. We are deeply thinking about that topic. An evaluation of uh, between eight and ten billion dollars. Well, Does that let sound the market right? Decide those things. Okay. Is there any substance to reports that you're in talks with private credit funds to raise five hundred million? Well, I, well, you know, there are so many conversations we have. We are a large enough organization where we do try to do many, many things. And mm. So we're in conversations with a variety of things to with a variety of capital partners. We have a lot of capital partners. So. Uh, I won't necessarily put anything specific against that claim, but we have a lot of conversations happening all the time. And one of those uh, capital partners is SoftBank, 40% stake in the Mobi. Are there any plans in the conversations that you've had with Masterson to raise that stake? Uh, well, you know, they're close partners to us. Mm. Uh, we are trying to figure out things in the future. Very final question. Naveen, are tech entrepreneurs like yourself, and you are internationally exposed as well, mm -hmm. are you largely agnostic about what's going on with this uh, tariff and trade narrative and broader global uh, growth concerns? Well, the way I would put this, Sri, is that I don't think we're agnostic to it, but the, the pace at which these things are changing today, you are better off being like just observing it and not necessarily trying to figure out your strategy basis that because nobody knows what it's going to look like. So I think we're going to wait for the things to settle if they would uh, and then figure out our, our strategy. As of right now, we are just executing as if nothing's changed. The world is exactly as it is and we're just going for it.